Hey everybody, so that right there is our long-term Polaris Ranger XP1000 Backcountry Edition. Now we're living with this side-by-side -side for about four months, straight through the summer, and I really want to put it to the test in a lot of different ways. And right now, because it's springtime and there's so much water down there, you can see it over my shoulder, we want to test out the snorkel. So in this video, I'm going to crash through the deepest water I have. I don't think it's going to be deep enough. We're probably going to need to leave and find some even deeper stuff. We're definitely going to hit the mud and we'll see if the XP1000 Backcountry Edition keeps on rolling through it. Let's do it. start off right back here and I can show you guys two things. First of all, here's the power plant right here. Now this is the same 999cc twin cylinder dual overhead cam engine that comes in the regular XP1000 and it makes 82 horsepower. But here's what's more interesting. This is the snorkel system fitted to this backcountry edition. It runs right up the wall here and then it pops out just in front of your dump bed and it does not affect the ability to dump the bed which is nice. Now you can see all the plumbing here. The center snorkel comes down, that's venting the engine. This snorkel on my left comes down, you can see it's venting the CVT over here. And the CVT, um, it actually needs to draw in air and then vent air, so I'm sure that's what's part of what's going on over here. And then this snorkel over here, you can see it runs along the wall and then down underneath here. So the other upgrades on the backcountry edition here, and you'll have to excuse the black flies, that's just this time of year in Southern Ontario. Uh, we have arched A-arms, which help to get up out of the mud. Uh, we have, of course, the snorkel, like I mentioned. Polaris says that all my electronics here are sealed up. And then I also have a front winch. And you're going to want to make sure you stay tuned because I'm going to need the winch in a little bit. We'll get back to that. Um, what's interesting here is Polaris also offers the Ranger XP1000 High Lifter. Now, the High Lifter is, is a mud machine. It's mud dedicated. But this thing is almost a High Lifter light. Because the High Lifter gets the same snorkel package and the same arched A-arms, the biggest difference is the High High lifter gets unique suspension, it gets different tires, and it also gets a set of half doors which really helps to let the water evacuate but also to keep the occupants a little bit cleaner. So like I said, this is sort of a high lifter light where I'm getting a lot of that mud stuff but it's still not sort of hardcore mud dedicated. So before we get into the deep stuff, what's this model like just cruising down the trails? Well, one other upgrade that comes to the Backcountry Edition is slightly lower gearing. So compared to the regular XP1000, this machine feels like you get a little more in the low end, you feel a little bit more torque, a little more power off the line, but then overall, it's just not quite as fast as a regular XP1000. But that does not mean it's not fun. You can see in a few clips here, I got some serious speed going on my trails out here. And this machine still offers 11 inches of suspension travel. And when you're hitting, you know, whatever it is, whoops, rocks, ruts, the suspension here does a really nice job of swallowing things up. And for a utility machine, you can still go out and have a ton of high speed off-road fun. Now the power steering here comes standard on the XP1000 and it sort of skews toward the light end of things. It's kind of over boosted for my taste, um, but it's also not too much so that it feels sketchy or anything. You still sort of know where your wheels are at all times. Now this spring has been particularly wet, so there is a lot of standing water right now. So check this segment out. We're going up the hydro line. Let's see how it does. All right, everybody, here we are entering the mud of the hydro line. And this section shouldn't be a big issue. It's the section at the end that's real deep, but even this is pretty deep right now. Now the backcountry edition here has the lower gearing straight from the factory, so I got it in high, and it should have all the torque in the world it needs to pull me on through. And so far, this is basically just a Sunday cruise for this thing. <laughs> no problem, it just eats it up and loves it. Okay, and here we go into the deep section, and honestly, I don't anticipate much of an issue, so let's just creep on through. Oh, Ranger. Yes. I 
water's coming in the foot. Wells, bottom of this thing's filling up. Hasn't even slowed down yet. I'm gonna come to a nice peaceful stop and keep on going. This thing could hang out in the middle of that mud puddle all day. Now here's my little rock climb, which is getting steeper and muddier all the time. No problem. Nicely done, Ranger. Woo! Okay, I know what you're thinking. That was simple. Yeah, and you're kind of right. This XP1000 just walked right up the hydro line where, you know, some big full-size trucks and stuff where I know they would have struggled. This thing just went straight through there. And that's a testament to the 27-inch Max's tires, the 13 inches of ground clearance, and those arched A-arms. And as much as I knew this would be good in the mud, I really wanted to test it in the deep water. And the water up there was maybe knee high, not even quite up to my knees. But I do know of one body of water around here where I can definitely do a depth test. All right, the Ranger dealt with the mud with little issue at all. And same with the water. And truth be told, the water I have back there on the property right now, it's just not that deep, at least not deep enough to really test this thing. So we do have one body of water here that is deep enough, the lake. So I'm gonna do two things here. I'm gonna get a free wash, try to get some mud off. And then secondly, we're gonna test the snorkels. And also Polaris claims that all the electronics here are totally sealed up. So basically driving in this water up to the level of the snorkels should be okay. I'm gonna dive in the lake, we'll see what happens. Steven goes for his annual bath. All right, getting real deep this time. <laughs> is your butt wet? The winch? Oh, is your butt wet? Oh, my butt's wet. Okay. Let's fill it up too. <laughs> well, I don't know. You got more snorkel space. Keep going. Pretty deep. Oh, my seat just flipped up. I'm basically at the level of my waders now. Trying not to get a wet butt here. Come on, get the box. <laughs> get the box under. It's slowly filling up. Well, I'll give you some weight for traction. Okay, that's it. I'm floating, man! <laughs> Seriously felt like it lost all traction. I felt like I was doing this floating a lot. Okay, that's a lot of water coming out of the box. The box was loaded. Well, it is. It still is. And I just killed it. But look, it starts right back up. No issue at all for this thing. I did not start today thinking I was going to be a boat commander, but I definitely was one right there. And as sketchy as it felt backing into the lake that deep, you can't complain about the way this Ranger handled it. It kept on running. The CVT didn't get wet. Um, I've brought a lot of ATVs into our lake before when we're putting the dock in and taking boats out and for different reasons. And while I've never actually swamped anything, knock on whatever wood you have around, um, what I have done is got a lot of CVTs wet. And once the water gets on your CVT on the belt, you're just going to get slipping and then the machine essentially becomes useless. So the fact that all my venting here kept everything dry and running properly is a test them into the Polaris. But not everything was perfect today on our backcountry edition. So after I went in the lake, my dad who shot that segment said, hey, I've got an idea for you. I've got a perfect trench to test this thing out. And uh, it, it maybe wasn't perfect, but it did test the Ranger out. Take a look. Bring your ATV! I need a winch point! 
Are you ah. are you stuck? A little bit. I finally found something that could slow this ranger down. The ground here is super soft. Luckily, I got the wader. I thought it was. I thought that was a rock bottom. It looks like it, but it's not. So this is when my wireless remote comes in handy here, because I need to winch. Come on, winchy. Okay, or not. How's that working for you? What in the... What in the... Okay, sit rep, Ranger super stuck and winching it out. Alright, well, she's out of the mud. That was not an ideal situation. It was way softer in there than I thought. But I went in there with confidence because I have a winch, or so I thought. So I have to wonder, you know, my light's on the remote. Is it the remote? I buried it in water, so maybe something got in the connection. But this is the backcountry edition. Those snorkels on the back tell me that I can go in some deep, deep water. That should not have happened. Now, luckily, we had the Yamaha here to winch me out. Um, that was not the fault of the machine, by the way. You can see on the tire, that wasn't just mud. That's like some extra special, sandy, goopy, gross, white mud. That stuff was so soft, this thing just sank right in there. Um, but you know what, we're out, and the most important thing, it's still running. It never died, never lost power, the CVT never slipped. So all of that stuff worked great, the snorkels did fine. It's just this dang winch, like I said, that's not very backcountry at all. So what do you got to say? Well, apparently I have a confession to make, which is that it was my idea to go in the stream, and I did this like 20 years ago, and I could have sworn it had a hard bottom, but maybe I got uh, some timers or something, because... It wasn't hard! <laughs> it wasn't hard at all! Good thing I had my waders on! <laughs> you sank like the Titanic! <laughs> well, hey, at least you were here with another dad rescue. So yeah, you saw it there. I'm back now. The Ranger is still running fine, but the winch is still not working. And I know I got it wet. I know I put it right underwater, but this is a backcountry edition. You see where the snorkels are. I know for a fact that this thing is supposed to be buried in the water, so that should not have happened. And here comes a little bit of a PSA for you. Do not off-road alone. I know I've broken this rule before, you've probably broken this rule before, but if I was out there by myself, that's the kind of road where no one's gonna come along, no one's gonna come find me. I would have been entirely screwed out there had I been alone, and thankfully we brought along the Kodiak, and it has a 2,500 pound winch on the front, and that was able to pull me out. But that was the situation where, yeah, like I said, if I was by myself, it would have been bad news bears. So now here's where the long-term test comes in. This is my first video, I've already had an issue. Well, stay tuned, because I'm gonna let Polaris know exactly what happened. I'll probably end up back at the dealership. I kind of have a feeling that maybe it was just installed incorrectly, or maybe one of the connections wasn't installed tight enough, so some water got in there and it short-circuited and blew a fuse. That's sort of the simple answer. Maybe it's a more complex answer. Overall, the Backcountry Edition here, still pretty impressive today. I mean, basically no machine with four wheels has any business going that deep into a lake and then still driving itself right back out. However, it is kind of hard to feel good about this thing when something doesn't work, and especially when that something is as crucial as a winch is. So make sure you guys stay tuned to this series because I'm gonna find out exactly what happened here with the winch and we're gonna get this thing fixed because I wanna get in more sticky situations where I'm gonna need this winch. So as always guys, go below, leave a comment, hit the like button, and then come right back here to the channel for more news views and uh, Polaris Ranger XP1000 Backcountry Edition reviews. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.